I'm Andrew Baziri, and I'm here in downtown San Jose at Tech Shop. Thanks for joining us for this, the first video in our series about Black Death, my latest three pound all plastic combat robot. Uh, this robot was made for the Weaponized Plastic Fighting League. That's a league that is put on by a local startup, Fetch Robotics. And it's a very friendly league. There's just one major restriction beyond normal rules. The whole robot has to be made out of plastic. Everything has to be plastic, the armor, the weapon. The only exceptions are fasteners can be metal, shafts can be metal, motors and electronics can all be metal. Uh, this is actually the second robot that I've designed for this league. The first being this guy. This is uh, Michael J. Fox, and he's named that because this robot was designed for a competition in 2015, and it was very close to the date that Marty and the Doc actually traveled to. So they, in Back to the Future 2, they traveled to the year 2015, and the date's almost lined up for this guy. You can see that these two robots are very similar. They're both drum spinners, having weapons that take up you know, almost the entire of their front side. Uh, they both have the motor integrated directly into the drum. You can see that on this side and on this side here. And they're both invertible. Uh, so they definitely have those uh, elements in common, but let's get a closer look at Michael J. Fox and we'll talk about some of the things that didn't quite work with this design and that inspired kind of the new requirements for the, for the new one. So let's take a look at Michael J. Fox and see uh, what's wrong with him. That sounds weird. Let's take a look at this robot. <laughs> So the first and most obvious design flaw is that it can get stuck on its side. Uh, it's really stable on its side because it's just such a big flat area and the weapon really can't cause enough vibrations to get it to tip over again. So that is maybe the biggest oversight here. That's a way to instantly lose. Uh, because if you can't move for 10 seconds, you're knocked out. Uh, the second thing is that it really isn't heavy enough. The weight limit is about 1,360 grams. It's three pounds. Uh, but this all together is a couple hundred grams short of that. And furthermore, uh, too much of the weight is in the armor. It's basically invincible uh, defensively, but the weapon is much too small. It hardly even sticks out when you uh, take into account the fact that there is the high density polyethylene armor and then an additional piece of polycarbonate, which adds an eighth of an inch, which I hadn't accounted for in my pad, uh, which means that this can really barely hurt anything. It, it doesn't get a good bite at any point. Uh, Next, it needs better magnet mounting. It's always been a goal of mine on these robots to use magnets because the floor of the arena in the Weaponized Plastic Fighting League is made of steel. So you can use magnets to get more downforce, gives you more traction, helps you win pushing matches, helps you accelerate. Here you can see one of the small magnets, uh, but you'll notice that that's actually the only one on the whole robot. There used to be one, two, three, four, um, but they all popped off. It was just too hard to glue them on. Uh, and furthermore, they're really tiny magnets. These probably don't do anything. Uh, except reduce the ground clearance. There's maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe less, a sixteenth of an inch uh, between the wheel and that magnet, and this, this design is uh, very susceptible to being high centered, just stuck on even a small piece of debris or the edge of the arena, which is raised. Uh, next, one of the most common reasons that I lost with this robot was actually uh, because there was an electrical fault in the uh, driver for the motor. So let's take it apart and look at those. So underneath all the seat shrink is actually a custom motor driver board. Uh, it should be really fancy, but in reality it's just not reliable because it's something that really hasn't been tested thoroughly and it might have been assembled wrong. Uh, it um, seemed that during some heavy impacts the robot would just get stuck driving in one direction. It would become unresponsive to the controller, and usually that just meant driving into the wall until I lost the match. Uh, the next problem you can see has already happened here, and that is that the wires that are supposed to be soldered to the uh, motor terminals break off too easily. It's soldered just isn't a very good way of connecting them, especially because these motors are really close to each other. I didn't really account for the fact that these terminals stick out, and I need to give them some room in order to not flex the cables to too much of a degree such that they snap off. Uh, the next thing, more forgiving manufacturing. So the majority of, of the body of this robot is high density polyethylene and it's all machined from one piece. This pocket 
removing the material for the weapon, moving it, clamping it in a different direction, drilling all the holes on this side, which have a different pattern because of the large hole here for this bolt, versus the other side, which has lots of small holes that are countersunk for the weapon motors mounting. Um, so there's just lots of opportunities to screw up, and if you screw up further and further into the process, the more work you lose. Uh, and I did screw up in the very last operation on this guy. You might be able to see that there's this big gouge next to this uh, large bolt here. And that's because I actually crashed the entire mill. It uh, just pushed into the part. This whole piece here was like deflected at like a 20 degree angle. And it's just a good thing I was using this material, high density polyethylene. Um, it springs back into shape very easily. And although I made a really big mistake, which would have ruined this part if it was made out of metal or anything more stiff, um, I got really lucky here, but I learned my lesson. You shouldn't make something that, that is so easy to break just by one careless mistake. It should be a little bit more modular, especially because uh, that will aid it in being repaired during an actual combat event. The next thing that, that went wrong is that the weapon was just not mounted very well. Here, uh, I took a lot of inspiration from uh, Sergeant Cuddles, which is a one pound robot. And I thought, you know, maybe I could scale this up to three pounds. At least I believe Sergeant Cuddles is one pound. I might be wrong on that. I'll, I'll link to uh, Robert Cohen's video on that robot uh, in a card in the upper left. But anyways, uh, in that robot, the motor holds one side of the weapon and the other side is held, held by a bolt, just as you saw here with a bearing. And maybe that works in uh, a lighter division, but in this case, uh, it actually completely destroyed the motor. You can see how small the bearing is on this side of the motor compared to the bearing that was supporting the other side. And if I can get this apart, you might notice that uh, there are actually little pieces of metal all stuck on these magnets here because the bearings inside of this motor exploded and they went everywhere. There is no longer a bearing here in the, in the top of this as there once was. Uh, and that means that this weapon effectively jammed after uh, a few fights. And then lastly, the design of this weapon just isn't very good. I put a lot of effort in, but I can't say that it was very effective. The idea was that by offsetting a gap on one side with a tooth on the other side, in total, uh, that would give you a little bit more reach because this side would stick out that much further than if it was all even and symmetric. Uh, and I could still maintain a nice balanced weapon by making sure that for every tooth that went one way, I had a tooth that poked out the other way. In reality, this thing vibrated a lot. It wasn't really that balanced, and it didn't stick out enough. It could never land a good hit. Uh, so all those things I tried to address with uh, Black Death. So now let's go back through the, that list of uh, problems with Michael J. Fox and talk about how I tried to address them in Black Death. So first of all, can it get stuck on its side? By adding these uh, curved pieces, that's not a very stable configuration. And although it is possible to balance, largely that's no longer possible. Uh, secondly, it weighs a lot more. It's within just like 20 or 30 grams of the limit. And a lot more of that weight's in the weapon. The weapon itself is, I believe, uh, more than 40%, just a hair over, like maybe 42% of the entire robot. Uh, and you can tell that it does stick out quite a lot further, so you can really get a good hit. Uh, next, the magnets are mounted in a much more reliable way rather than being glued on. They're screwed on and they're much stronger. So these actually provided, I believe, about half a pound of downforce each. So in total, uh, you know, one extra pound of downforce for moving quickly or winning pushing matches. Uh, the next thing was that the drive electronics in this are tiny ESCs from FingerTech, very well proven, uh, reliable drive electronics. Uh, the motor mounting, I'm going to need to take it apart a little bit to show you. So of course this piece of fiber tape is not the original design. Originally, there should be a panel just like this panel on the other side, uh, but the receiver that I meant to use, I found out just like an hour before the competition, it wasn't going to work, and then I had to replace it with a bigger one, and the panel no longer fit on uh, once I had to accommodate the larger receiver. Uh, so at this point, we should have it disassembled enough that I can show you the motors. 
Just kidding. I think so. Okay, so here are the motors. Uh, I've removed one of them, which would normally be mounted uh, into this hole here, uh, just to kind of figure out what went wrong with it. But this bottom one, you can still see mounted along with its pulley, uh, which is driving a belt, uh, which drives the wheel. Uh, and here I'm using the uh, little clamp-on tab mounting system and there's plenty of room for that wire to go bend and, and go through the robot. Uh, next, better weapon mounting. So you might have seen some of these washers pop out as I was taking things apart, but there's actually a thrust bearing to take axial loads that run, you know, kind of uh, down the same axis as the weapon uh, in case maybe the, you know, another robot hits this thing on the side. This this bearing is very well equipped to handle that load. And then for the radial loads that kind of go uh, radially from the shaft, we have inside of both of these needle bearings. And all of that should make a very uh, strong bond. All of these bearings can handle hundreds of pounds of force compared to uh, the old design, which used these little chintzy bearings on a much smaller shaft. This is a quarter inch shaft rather than three millimeters, so it's uh, more than twice as big. Okay, and lastly, let's compare the weapon designs. And Michael J. Fox didn't stick out very much, and this kind of trying to do uh, something clever by leaving gaps and teeth, not the best idea, uh, and in total, never really got a great hit in. This one goes for one tooth, so that means that I believe this side sticks out something like uh, five, almost six mil, uh, centimeters, whereas the other furthest points on the opposite side stick out only 3.8 centimeters. Uh, so really a significant amount, you know, basically this whole point here is what makes contact with the enemy. And although it's a very odd shape, it actually is very well balanced. It was, you know, designed in CAD. Um, so this thing spins very well, doesn't cause vibrations. and it gives you a lot of time as this thing slowly comes around for you to get and drive closer and closer to the enemy so that by the time it's come all the way around, you really overlap them a great deal, you get a big hit, and that's what, what we call having a, a nice amount of bite, that amount of overlap so that you can really impart a lot of force and you don't just like, you know, glance off them and brush them. So in many ways, uh, a better design. So I hope you can see what I was thinking of when I made this design. And uh, in the next video, we're going to actually go through the manufacturing process. It's clear to me that this is already enough information for one video. Um, and then after that, the fights, and then the post-mortem.